Okay, so suddenly there's a variety of answers. Two of them are, are kind of major ones, and so I'm just going to slide right past, the, right through here, tell you the answer, and let you work on it on your own. Um, it travels at a constant speed the whole time. Remember we had something traveling in a circle? Its velocity or its momentum is always changing toward the center of the circle. If this is the circle that that arc is traveling on, then its center is right here. And toward the center of the circle means southeast, if you're at point four. If you're at point two, toward the center of the circle would mean northwest. If you're at point one, the velocity vector isn't changing at point one, because just before point one, it's the same as just after. It's east both times, and so it's not changing at all along this straight path. When it curves, it's changing, because that velocity vector and that one are not the same at all. So when something changes its direction, its velocity vector is changing. Any questions about that one? Four should have been southeast. Yeah? For point three, um, where do you say the direction of that one is going? So, so point three is a, is a funny one, so I didn't ask you point three. Um, yeah, point two would be northwest. So when, you, when you're curving, what is it doing along this curve? It's curving to the, toward the north, from the east toward the north. Later on, it's curving from the north back toward the east again. So right at point three, it's strictly speaking not changing either way. Just before point three, it was going more toward the north. And just after point three, it's going more toward the east. It's, it's turning in a different direction. But exactly at point three, the car is neither turning to the left nor turning to the right yet. So right after point three, it starts turning to the right. Just point before point three, it was turning to the left. At point three, it's not doing either one. So I didn't want to ask you that one, but uh, sure. Yeah? Can we use the subtraction method? For, this? for point three? Uh, for point four. For point four, yes. Yes, you can. If you take a point just afterwards, you get a vector like that. So v final looks like that. If you take a point just before, you get a vector that looks like that. This one is something like that. So if I put it in the opposite direction, I could call that negative v initial. And if I take v final and I add this negative v initial, then what I get is a delta v that points uh, southeast. So, so you should be able to do this for any, for any point. And if I ask you about a specific point, Pick a vector, velocity vector that's tangent to the path just before then, and a velocity vector that's tangent to the path just after that, and then subtract those two, and that'll tell you the direction that it's changing in the middle, in the range in the middle. So we're not using the third point? As <laughs> we're not using the, no, if you pick, the trouble with, if, if you go too far, so let me go back here. V is the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta r over delta t. If you pick a point back here and a point up there, say, or even a point back here and a point way over here, you're not taking the limit as delta t goes to zero. You are looking at a big, giant delta t where all sorts of stuff has happened in the meantime, and you're not looking at what's happening right at that point. So, you don't have to, in your, in your, you don't have to take the limit as delta t goes to zero, but you should think of taking a delta t that's really small, so it's a representative delta, delta v. For the previous slides, we're using like two points, um, <laughs> not that one point right, right before the, the final. You're taking two points, and so I, 
I uh, kind of quickly said this, but not very, not very uh, strongly. Um, I, t I gave you two points, close to each other. And I asked you what delta v was. And then right at the end, I asserted that that's the change in velocity for a kind of midpoint between those two. So as a midpoint between those two, it's changing to the left. Yeah? Are we assuming the, the point, the initial point in this? Yeah, in the previous slide, the initial point is just the, uh, the point which goes for the base. Well, I, I defined initial for you. So I gave you an initial time right there and a final time right there. And, and I picked those two, and I, and I said this, but I didn't say it really well, so let me say it again. Uh, I meant the delta v for b to be for some time about halfway in between those two. But I tried to pick two, two uh, directions that were, that were close to, or two uh, points that were close to each other and, and surrounded the, the time when I was actually interested in the. I want to do something real rather than have you practice with things that aren't real. So suppose you have a cart. Here's a cart. I think the fan blows this way. Yep. So the fan's going to blow air that way, and that's what shows there. That cart can roll without, without uh, friction, basically. There's a little bit of friction, but let's ignore it. It's not very big. The cart can roll fairly easily. And, and so I want to pick two objects. I would say two objects are interacting. The cart is interacting with the air. The cart includes the fan, it includes the motor, it includes all of those other pieces. I'm going to call that the cart. The cart interacts with the air. The initial speed before I turn the fan on the initial momentum of the cart is zero because its initial velocity is zero. The final moment or the initial momentum of the air, I'm going to say is zero because I haven't turned the fan on yet. So what's the total initial momentum if the two are each zero? Hopefully you're okay with zero. Does the momentum change? I'm going to tell you that if we can ignore friction this way, then there's, there are no horizontal forces except for the ones that are inside between the cart and the air. There's no for horse, for horizontal forces from the outside. So no way to transfer momentum left or right. I'm not going to come over here and, and kick it. So I'm not going to transfer momentum left or right from the outside. So the change in the total momentum is going to be zero. Momentum is going to be conserved, in other words. You probably can uh, figure out that uh, P initial, whoops, P final equals P initial plus delta P. This is another way of writing the same equation for delta p. So if p initial is 0 and you add delta p onto that, you've, which is 0, you find p final is 0. So what I'd like you to do in answering this question, think about the initial momentum of the system, 0. Draw a vector for the air momentum after I turn this on, in other words, final. And then use the sum of these momenta, this the cart momentum plus the air momentum had better be equal to the, to the uh, total momentum. And let me know what you get. <laughs>